Hi designers, it's Haley with Silver Moon Branding and Design back again with another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make a glass jar with a metal or aluminum cap and that's pretty much it. Let's go! I'm going to start off by dragging my reference object onto a blank canvas, blank artboard in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to resize it a little bit and get it how I like on the artboard. I'm going to name this reference layer and I'm going to lock it. And then the layer above will be my artwork layer. That's where I'm going to work and draw my shapes. So first thing I'm going to do is get my rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a rectangle around this shape so I can find the center point. It's important to have a center point so that when you are creating your shape, um, doing the revolve in 3D, that it is the right width. So the goal is to create half of the jar. So what I'm doing here with the anchor points is I am drawing the shape just halfway. So there's a bigger curve at the bottom, so I'm going to separate this. I'm going to click on this anchor point, and I'm going to use this curve tool to bring it in to match my reference material. That's looking good. And then this one has a slight curve, so I'm going to pull it down that much. So then this way, I'm going to pull this other anchor point and start tracing the remaining curves of this shape. So I can click this, pull that curve out, get it to match pretty well. And then I'll also start to curve around here. And then this has a lid on it, so I have to do a little bit of guessing, but we're gonna have another curve here. And then I think that's gonna be the mouth of my jar. So I'm gonna stop it right about there. And then clean up my lines here so that they're smooth. I use the smoothing brush tool. And it doesn't have to be perfect because these glass jars never are. You know, they're like a dollar or whatever here in America. And they end up just being kind of cheap. So um, I was gonna try to tweak this one a little bit. There we go. Let's get a little bit of a curve. And I'm good with that. So to create that lower level, I'm going to create another anchor point there. I'm going to select both of these and just bring them down. Since this is a little bit of a tilted curve just from the way the photography is, I'm going to have to reimagine that a little bit in my head and not trace it exactly. So how I imagine this to look is similar to this, where there's a base and then the bigger curve and follows it all the way around. So now that we have the outside of the glass, we need to create the inside of the glass. So I will make a copy of this line. I'm gonna increase the stroke. I'm gonna make it pretty thick. And then go to Object, Path, Outline, Stroke. Take it from Fill to Outline. And then use my scissors tool to snip away that outside edge because we just don't need that. We already have our outside edge. And then I'm going to drag, I'm gonna delete this line. It's getting in my way. <laughs> so I'm gonna drag it, drag these points so that they touch and connect and join them. So now I'm gonna tweak the inside a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is delete this because we all know the curve of the jar, it gets a little thicker up top. It doesn't have the same inset. Um, it's a smooth opening with just a little more thickness to the glass. So I'm going to delete those, I'm gonna clean it up, and I'm definitely gonna round that slightly. That'll be good. And then same at the base. I'm gonna guess that the inside doesn't follow the same curve. It's a little thicker because it needs to have some weight to keep it from tipping over easily. So I'm gonna go with that, but then it does kind of look like it insets a little bit now that I'm looking at it. So what I'm going to do is bring that down slightly and then bring this anchor point out. You do want to continue to have a flat edge on the inside because if not, especially with glass, you're going to see that it's not connecting. It's going to mirror this image and maybe not look exactly how we need it to. So I always try to make sure that that is straight but that's looking more realistic. And then the other thing to note are these ridges on the inside, and I'll show you how to create those here in a second. 
but just hang on while we revolve our shape. So I'm gonna bring it to the side so that I can focus on the lid in just a minute. Um, but I'm going to go to 3D materials and hit revolve. And there we go. Right now it has an outline, but I'm gonna flip it to be a solid fill. And now I'm gonna create these dots at the bottom here. So I'm gonna copy this jar, bring it over here. I'm gonna just delete the materials for a minute because I don't really need that. What I need is the width of both shapes connected, like the total width of this circular part. So I mirrored that really quick. I transformed it so that I can see what this circular portion would be. I'm gonna get my circle tool and I'm going to draw a circle that lines up pretty closely with that so that this would be the base. You know, if we tilted it, this is what the jar sits on. So I don't need these shapes. I'm gonna delete those. I'm gonna take the circle and I'm gonna make it an outline. Come over to my stroke panel here and I'm gonna increase the weight a little bit so it's easier to see. But I'm gonna click dashed line and that's gonna give me these dashes. So I might even wanna make the width taller because these lines are taller than they are wide and then adjust the dash to be half of that. And then I'll add a gap here of five points. That's too small, what about 20 points? 20 points looks pretty good. So now that I have the dashes how I like, this is gonna be the base. I'm going to come to 3D materials and I'm going to click extrude. And this is gonna make them come to life and be 3D. So I can see in the depth that I think that they're a little bit too tall for that base. And if I come back here and measure it, I'm gonna say that I need them to be 16 points. So come back here to the depth and click 16 points. And this is something I might change later in Dimension because I'm not gonna apply any graphics to it. I don't think that if I change the dimensions inside of Dimension that it will really mess anything up. Sometimes if you create a bottle, like if you created the jar this size and then you went into Dimension and stretched it this way, that if you applied a graphic or a texture, it would also stretch with it. So make sure if you are creating a shape and that's something that's important, like if you're adding a wood grain texture or um, a, a pattern, like a circular pattern, make sure that you're creating those within scale to what you need before you go to dimension. And then if you need to change it later, it's easy to come and select these points and move them and you can make them taller and then re-export your obj file so so far we have our dotted lines in here we have our jar and now we just need to make our lid so i'm going to actually bring this back and turn off the 3d materials for a minute i just want to make sure that i'm drawing a lid that will fit outside our glass and make it proportional so i will start at our center point here it's gonna give me that purple line telling me I'm at the middle. And I'm gonna draw a rectangle that's up here. So since this is tilted and I can see a little bit of the top, I have to reimagine it to be turned and be a little more flat. So I'm gonna pull it outside and there you can see I'm already surpassing where the glass, the edge of the glass is. Um, so I don't need this outline anymore. Now that I have that, I'm good to go. So now what I'm gonna do is copy and add acre points until I've created the shape that I want. So I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna follow this edge and then instead of following it with the curve, I'm gonna go straight across. So here we go. I will use my pen tool and just put a few um, extra anchor points here. So that, let me pull this one in and then I'll place that there. You know, just following the curve of this jar. And you might need a few extra, so I'm gonna bring this in. I will need a few. That's following most of the curves here. Now that I have my anchor points there, I'm gonna add the curves that go along with this lid. So I'll add a curve there, we'll curve in there. 
man, this is probably one of my favorite tools. It feels like it's newer. Um, <laughs> when I first started out, we had to work with the Bezier curves the old school way, and that was just a pain. So I am so thankful for this tool. Sometimes I do still need to smooth out my lines. There we go. Getting those curves really nice. And then this is actually gonna have to come out because these are going to be really round. So this one will be round and then this one is gonna also be round. It's gonna, these two are gonna be fighting for that curve. I actually think this needs to be a little sharper because that's kind of how it wraps around. It's like the metal is wrapping around that base there. So I'm gonna play to make it look that way. Yeah, I think that'll achieve what we're looking for to have it duck back in and create that shadow. And then we're also gonna need to create that ring at the top. So I will do the same thing we did before. I'm gonna make a copy. I'm going to mirror that copy by going to transform reflect, reflect it vertically and drag it in. This way I can create the circle from the center that matches that lid. Now I can delete the outlines and use this as my dashed line. You need to be taller. And I also think these are much closer together than the bottom, so I will bring those in, adjust the dash, and adjust the gap until it looks like my source material. Let's go with three and six. I'm happy with that. Now we go to 3D and materials and hit extrude. And if the other was 16 points, then this will probably need to be 10 points. Let's try 10. Okay, 10 points it is. Oh, the other thing is that this one appears to have the inset, like the separate pieces. So let me create that on the top so that we can accurately portray that. All right, so I'm gonna add an anchor point there. I'm gonna just add two back to back and I will come grab these inside two and drag those down. And then I will drag this anchor point inside to give it that look like it is inset. You could make two separate pieces. I'm gonna to try to fudge my way through here and give it the look without having to have two separate pieces. And then it kind of dips down again. So there's our first line. I'm gonna make the same inset. Drag those two down. And then this one is sloped, so I will make a curve that way. I think there's even one more. So then let me add one more anchor point and drag those down one more time. All right, let's see how we're looking now. Let's click revolve and see what we have going for us. Hey, that looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty convincing, like it's two pieces, but it's one, so it saves us a step. And next on the line is to export all of our pieces and parts here. So I will select each one individually and click export selection. Same for the lid. Same for the bottom bumps. <clears throat> for the bottom and for the top export selection. So now I have all four pieces and parts that I've created. I'm gonna name this one jar, name this one lid, name this jar dots, and name this one lid dots. And I'm gonna export those in the format OBJ. Now it's time to take them into Adobe Dimension.